guys, welcome to the eight steps you're going to need to take in order to scale your one person business to that seven figure mark per year. Now, seven figures is absolutely, you know, insane. If you can make in seven figures per year, honestly, you have way more money than what you probably even know what to do with it. Even making like over 500K a year, which I have achieved at the age of like 26 going into 27. You know, I can even tell you from personal experience that honestly, this stuff is insane. Like even making more than like 10, maybe even 12K per month is absolutely insane. So getting yourself up to that infamous 83.3K, you know, reoccurring mark per month is absolutely insane. Now I've hit, you know, over 90K months and whatnot in my, you know, height of business. I've also hit over 900K in total sales as of recording this particular video since starting my business. So I do feel somewhat qualified to record this. Not only that, but I've actually gone through each one of these stages sequentially and you'll actually see that and I'll actually give you real life examples of how I've done it as well so that you can actually take the lessons actually implement into your one person business. Now, without any further ado, let's jump straight onto my computer because I do have a little note or a notepad, should I say, to go through with you guys. So here are the eight phases, right, to building a seven figure one person business. And again, I'm just going to quickly define this for you guys because I know that this one person and business is a new phrase that's being thrown around here and there, but and everybody has their own kind of like definition for it. But here's how I define a one person business. A one person business is a life philosophy and business vehicle that allows any individual to basically turn their name, like their actual name itself, into a six figure business around what they're passionate about. Um, so they can actually, which enables them, should I say, to do more of what they love whilst making money and making an impact doing that said thing that they love. So it's almost like taking your journey, what you love doing, your passion, your experiences and what you're skilled in and kind of like the knowledge in your head and turning it into a six-figure business by turning your name itself, like your name like Montel Gordon, I identify as, you know, that's literally my name, Montel Gordon. It identifies now online as a business, as a brand, almost like how Grant Cardone, you think of him as a businessman, how you think of Tony Robbins, you think of him as a businessman, Andrew Tate, that's a brand right there. So what I found is, is, is that a one-person business is the ultimate balance within Ikigai. If you guys know what Ikigai is, you guys should probably just Google that. It's basically getting paid for what you love to do what you're passionate about, what the world needs, what you're skilled in and what you're kind of like experienced in those kind of like four or five areas combined. And you don't need employees. It's just you yourself, your experiences, your journey, your skills, your passion and the knowledge in your head and your name that becomes the actual business itself. Now to premise this journey to scaling to seven figures. And again, seven figures, a decent chunk of change coming in each and every day. Now I say that obviously coming in from, you know, d depending on where you're coming from in life, a l like seven figures to a billionaire is obviously just like absolute chump change. Like a billionaire is literally a million times a thousand every single year. I'm pretty sure you guys know that, that, that particular stat. So a million, you know, depending on where you're at in your life, a million can sound like a lot of money. A million can sound like absolute chump change as well. So it just depends on where you're at. So, you know, coming from perspective, you know, forgive me, I don't know where you guys are at the moment, but I'm just gonna premise this, this video by saying the journey to seven figures, if you're starting off from complete zero, can take anywhere from one year if you're really, on the ball, I would even say you've got an element of luck in there. Let's not lie, there's probably gonna be an ele element of luck in there, but you can take anywhere up to one to even five years. Even if this takes seven years, guys, think about it. If you spend seven years scaling yourself from zero to that millionaire mark, you know, making a million dollars in a single year, making, you know, building a business to a million dollars in a single year, and it takes you seven years, like, so what? Like, what else are you gonna be doing with your life? Like, what better things could you be doing with your life except building a million dollar friggin' one person business. That's insane, guys. So even if it does take you even 10 years, like so, like literally, so what? Like, you know what I mean? I, I'm, I'm so tired of seeing people trying to scale their businesses to these crazy ridiculous amounts in like 30 days and falling for these like get rich quick scams or just thinking about all this get rich stuff, like get rich quick stuff. I, I want you to kind of like just relinquish that from your brain because honestly, the best businesses that I've seen are normally built, you know, over time and are able to sustain over time. Normally what comes quick doesn't last as they, as they say. Now, like I said, even if it takes you seven years or even five years to build this or even 10 years to build this, it doesn't matter because it's gonna be the most rewarding work you ever do in your life. And I just wanna give, give you a quick stat before we jump into this. The average millionaire, I just Googled this by the way, the average million, millionaire, according to um, Zipia, I believe that's how you pronounce that, dot com, is actually 57 years old. So even when you put it into perspective, like if you're watching this, normally the people that are watching my videos are normally around 18 to maybe like 25-ish, maybe even 35-ish years old, according to my statistics. Like that's the majority of viewers, 18 to 25. Five years, honestly, isn't a long time. Like quite literally. I still remember what I was doing five years ago. Like five years ago, I was completely broke, quite literally. And now I've made over 900K. So I've technically 
gone to this actual seven figure mark in terms of you know total sales but not actually done it in terms of like making a full million in a single year but you know that's up, up and coming and this is how i'm going to do it as well this is why i wanted to break this video down now that i've premised that five years doesn't actually sound like too much of a bad deal if you if you ask me like the average millionaire is 57 years old that's you know that's i won't say that's old but i'm saying like yo five years is nothing that's chump that like, like i said it's like chump change to be honest with you um, now to premise this again i also want to say that when you're going through these stages these phases these stages phases steps whatever you want to call them what i want you to be doing is i want you to be documenting all of this from the very day you decide to even start a one-person business despite you being a complete beginner despite you having zero testimonials despite you being inexperienced despite you not being good at sales despite you not being good at anything despite you having never sold anything before in your entire life throw all of that crazy stuff out the window where you think you need to be some sort of professional to actually be on youtube or an expert to be on youtube that's that's absolute bs guys if you take a look at anybody's channel including mine you can actually go back on my channel right now i recommend you do this after this video go back to my very 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 first video you will see that i'm inexperienced i can barely speak to the camera i can barely hold a you know i can barely formulate a sentence construct a sentence properly you'll see how many cuts there are in the video i mumble over my words all the time i still do that to this day i'm not an expert i'm actually dead broke in that video I'm wearing a friggin' friend's hoodie. My, the, the camera that I'm using is literally held up by, I think it was a box and some books. So as you can see, there was, there was no professionalism in it at all. I was not an expert. And again, remember at the start, right, of your journey, when you start documenting all this stuff, nobody is going to watch you and nobody's going to take you seriously. Nobody will. Like who, who takes somebody seriously after like free Instagram posts or free YouTube posts for their personal brand? Nobody's gonna take you seriously, guys. Like literally nobody's gonna take you seriously. The key is though, and by the way, this happens to everybody. It happens to me, happens to Iman Gaji, happened to Andrew Tate, happened to everybody. The first the first couple of videos that you drop online, nobody's gonna take you seriously. Look at Mr. Beast. I'm pretty sure that his first ever couple of videos, he was getting like maybe one or two views or something crazy like that. So no one's gonna take you seriously and nobody's gonna actually pr pretty much watch your journey. But here's the key. You're going to get so good at what you do and what you're passionate about that it's going to force people to watch you. And I just want to give you an example of this. I read in a in, in a Russell Brun Brunson's book just the other day. He basically says that, you know, like Game of Thrones, if you take Game of Thrones, for example, Game of Thrones, like most people didn't actually start watching Game of Thrones, like the actual season Game of Thrones, until like season five or six. So most imagine if the actual creators of Game of Thrones, right? The actual, you know, this you know, not the author itself, you know, George R. R. Martin, the actual creator of Game of Thrones just basically decided to quit after five seasons or even three seasons. Well, then he would have, you know, that, that company or whoever, whoever was producing it, the actual produ production team would have lost lots of money, lots of effort, lots of time. Not only that, but they were actually onto something huge. Like Game of Thrones is one of the biggest TV series pretty much ever. And most people didn't actually start watching Game of Thrones until like season four, season five, season six. So imagine if they stopped at season three. So for you, when you stop, when you actually start posting like videos and documenting your journey, I don't want you to just post maybe like 30 videos, 50 videos. I want you to keep going until you've got like 100, 200, 300, 400, 500 videos on YouTube channel. Now I know that sounds a lot, but breaking it down into small numbers, like doing three videos a week and then having one day dedicated to recording each, each you know, three of your videos, it's not a lot of work guys, quite literally, it's not a lot of work, especially if you've got a video editor and you are you know, getting more comfortable on the camera. At the start, it does take a little bit of time and effort to get comfortable on the camera, of course, but um, I don't want you guys to be quitting. Now, let's talk about the actual eight phases everybody must go through. Let's actually put this on a different page. Let's zoom into this as well, guys. So here are the eight phases I've seen people go through. Phase one is self-exploration. I've noticed this and I mentioned this in one of my other videos that like when you want to start like any sort of business or one person business or even a personal brand, a lot of you guys are scared to start a personal brand because you guys are claiming that you don't have any experience or any skills or any kind of like positive transformations you've made in your life. Well, in order to actually even, or even, even passions is what I found. So what I actually recommend you guys do is when you first get started, the very first thing you should do is start exploring who you are and who you want to be in the future. 
Like, where do you picture yourself in five years time? Where do you picture yourself in three years time? Where do you picture yourself in two years time? Then what I actually um, recommend you do is start writing these, like figure out what your dream life looks like. Where do you wanna live? How big is your house? What car are you driving? How do you dress? How do you speak? What time do you wake up? How many hours per day do you work? If somebody was to write a Wikipedia page about you, what would your Wikipedia page say? All these sorts of questions you wanna ask yourself and then build up what you call your dream life. Then what you need to do is stop figuring out which skills are gonna enable you to achieve that dream life. So for example, let's say you said in five years time, you want to be a millionaire and you want a certain type of business, then what, what you need to do is start figuring out, you know, who are the people that are successful in that same business as you and start looking at what sort of skills that person possesses that already has the lifestyle and the business that you want. Then start picking up those skills yourself. So it's all about self-exploration first, then you start immersing yourself into self-improvement books. You start looking up who's in your particular niche, who is the top dogs in your niche, who has courses. You start learning from courses, YouTube videos, podcasts. You basically just honestly just immerse yourself. This is what I like to call the sponge. It's almost like the sponge phase. It's almost like you, you start identifying what your dream life is. You then start figuring out, okay, cool. Well, if I, if I want to look like Montel 5.0 in the future, you know, five years down the line, that's a future version of me. Well, I'm going to need these skills, these set, these skills. I'm going to need to be sharp at sales. I'm going to need to wake up early. I'm going to need to stop partying and drinking alcohol. I'm going to need to have like proper discipline and routines. Then what you do is each one of those areas, you know, I need to be good at sales, I need to be good at outreach, all those areas, what you then do is start picking up skills in one in each of those areas so you can actually become good at it so you start moving towards your dream life by actually you know diving into and delving into self improvement books courses learning sales learning marketing all these skills that you're going to need you start picking them up yourself and by the way this is one of the best things you can ever actually do because these skills are going to be transferable like for example when i ran my agency i only shut that down in november that was actually november yeah, it was November 2022, but I actually had that agency for years, literally years. And I can tell you right now, pretty much every single skill I learned when it came to running an agency has been transferable in pretty much every other business I've ever run. Marketing, sales, outreach, building brands, building my name up, communication with clients, team building, pretty much everything you can think of has been transferable. So get into the self-improvement stuff. And this is one of the reasons what's, one of the reasons why a lot of people have been held back. Obviously you can't start a personal brand if you don't even have a passion or anything that you actually have, you know, at least started making one or two steps in a positive direction in. For example, if you're just a dude that watches video games or like watching video games and streamers all day, and you smoke weed all day, then obviously no one's gonna wanna watch your channel. But if you're a dude that's come to the realization that you're a dude that is like a, a, a you know couch potato and you're watching video games all day, but you wanna better yourself, well then that would be a great video. How I'm going to overcome your bad habits. That would be one of your very first video titles. So now at least you've, you've started exploring yourself, started realizing that, hey, look, I'm wasting my life here. I'm 18, 19, 20 years old. All I do all day, every single day is smoke weed, get high. I go out on the weekends, I party too much. I'm playing video games too much. I'm watching streamers too much. I'm watching these haram videos online too much at least you've come to that realization. So that's what I call self-exploration. Then once you actually come to the self-realization that your life's not where you want it to be, you then start jumping into self-improvement, you know, reading books, courses, podcasts, all that sort of stuff, find out who the gurus are in your particular niche, or even start looking in, looking up to certain people that you actually really resonate with online. You start finding idols, and then what you do is you start experimenting on yourself. And what I mean by that, that, that is, is you start taking what these people are saying in their books, their podcasts, all these little skills that you're picking up and you start experimenting with those skills on yourself. So I call this a self-experimentation phase or DTTY, do the thing yourself. Do the thing yourself, AKA when I really want to improve my life. So this is how I did it. You know, I was broke, pretty much lazy, used to play Assassin's Creed all, all friggin' day, and um, what's it called, Shadow of Mordor and all that crazy stuff on like PS4, PS, you know, PS5 wasn't even out there, PS3 and PS4, it was back in the day. I then started getting into self-improvement, started reading a whole bunch of books, Rich Dad Poor Dad was my first book I ever read, then I started looking into other books. So the next book I actually started reading was like The Millionaire Fast Lane. I think the guy, the second name of his, the author is like DeMarco or something like that, just Google DeMarco books and it will actually come up, I just did that myself because I forgot, to, completely forgot what the title was. So I started then, 
learning all about these certain online business models and you know changing from I want to start a clothing line didn't really know what I was doing then I actually moved into online business started reading more about online businesses marketing sales all this crazy stuff and I started experimenting on myself aka I started t taking the teachings from other people and started practicing it on myself to see if I can solve my own problems and lo and behold I started setting meetings and I didn't actually close a client for quite a long time for my social media marketing agency by the way but I got you know I was making that positive transformation in my life whilst documenting it and whilst I was doing that unbeknownst to me I was actually growing an audience you know very slowly but very surely these are actual real fans of me just not, I wouldn't even call them fans it's real people that actually just wanted to see just an average dude on the internet try and build something with their life this is the power of documentation guys so I started self experimenting with all these different teachings from all these different people I then started getting results you know over time over time you know over years and whatnot I started developing my own frameworks your frameworks are your own unique way of doing things so for example, I mentioned this all the time in my previous videos, but long story short, it's almost like you start learning from all these different sources and you take the things that are really, you know, positively affecting you and your progress in life, whatever you're trying to achieve, and you disregard the things that don't really work for you. So let's say you're learning sales and you want to become really good at sales, for example, and you're passionate about sales. Well, then you start reading a whole bunch of sales books and then you start resonating with certain authors and things that that author's particularly said. You write that down and now you've got kind of like a combination of certain skills from all these different authors and you put that put them together in a way that nobody else has done that. And this becomes your own unique framework, your own unique way of doing things. So these, bec these become your, um, what I call your own unique frameworks. So you start develop developing those unique frameworks and you start to, and obviously because you've got your own frameworks and you're testing them on yourself that's also you know self-testing so again self-exploration turns into self-improvement then it turns into self-experimentation or doing the thing yourself you then start developing your own frameworks because there's no point just using everybody else's teachings and stealing people's stuff you start you know getting good at this sort of stuff and then start coming up with your own ways of doing things by combining certain ideas you've heard from all over the place combining them together and you actually start testing them yourself and getting what you call proof of concept once you've got proof of concept and it works on yourself you start field testing those concepts or those frameworks you know, to other people. And this is where done for you starts coming in. For example, let's say you are looking to start an agency, for example, and you're learning you're learning Facebook ads. Well, what you do is you start testing Facebook ads on yourself, trying to grow your own brand, your own, you know, mini miniature business on the side or whatever it is. Then what you can do is start field testing your own frameworks on your on, on yourself. You know, like I said, building out your own stores or even just trying to build up your personal brand and seeing if you can get any subscribers, followers, that sort of stuff. And then what you can actually do is start field testing those on other people by either charging charging them a very low amount or doing it for free. I don't really recommend doing it for free because there's better ways of doing that. But that's the done for you business model, AKA you actually start doing the thing for people. Once you start getting good at that, and that might take you maybe six months, seven months, 12 months, 50 months, two years down the line. Obviously, this is where you're starting to make some, some decent money, by the way. You can easily get yourself up to 10K to even like 50K. Sometimes even, even, even you know, and this is per month, by the way. Even, even further than that, I've seen people run done for you marketing agencies at like 100K per month and stuff like that, past 100K per month. The profit margins aren't that great though when it comes to done for you, which is why eventually you always want to, you know, switch into coaching, which is done for you. Actually taking that same thing and giving it to somebody in the form of one-to-one -one coaching. For example, if you're running Facebook ads for e-commerce brands, right? And you tested this on yourself, you come up with your own frameworks. Well, then what you would do is you'd start off by offering Facebook ads to other e-commerce brands and doing it for them. And you can build a team and all this crazy stuff that goes into in, into this. I'm just brief, you know, going over these quite quickly just for brevity's sake. Uh, but then eventually what you want to do is when you get really good at Facebook ads, you come really potent at that. Then what you end up doing is start offering your Facebook ad services. Instead of it being a service, you now just coach these e-commerce brand owners on how to actually do the Facebook ads themselves. So now it's gone from giving a man a fish for a day so he can eat for a day to teaching a man how to fish so he can eat for a lifetime. That's the difference between, you know, done for you and done with you services. Then what's going to happen is eventually because you're doing a lot of one-to-one -one work, and by the way, you want to definitely follow this in, a, in the exact same order, by the way, don't just try to learn something put it into a course and then sell it. That's never gonna work, guys. Like, honestly, that's just genuinely never gonna work. And that's how, you know, these scams come across and we don't wanna be doing that. We don't wanna skip any of these steps because we wanna do this legitly. We wanna do this the most ethical way. And we wanna do this quickly, obviously. But we wanna also make sure that we're doing it in the proper way is what I'd say to that. So once you've actually jumped into, into coaching like full-time or cons consulting, or, you know, full-time, full what's gonna eventually happen is because you're working with like, you know, clients one-to-one, -one, 
eventually you're gonna start maxing out because obviously one-to-one -one coaching is very, very time consuming. So you're gonna end up moving into group coaching. So let's say you've got 10 clients, right? And you're actually jumping on a call with each client for like two hours each uh, per week. So that's already 20 hours of work per week. That's actually quite an extensive. So obviously you've got to do marketing still, you've got to get clients in, you still got to do sales and all that crazy stuff because you're a one person business. So what's going to end up happening is you're going to end up probably moving into group coaching. So now you've got your 20 uh, or your 10 clients all on one call, which lasts maybe three hours per week. Or even you, you might even do two of these calls per week. So now you, you've, you've taken your work week from 20 hours of work servicing 10 clients to those same 10 clients all getting on one call with you, but not, or, or even two calls with you, but each call lasts three hours each. So you've gone from doing 20 hours of work for 10 clients to six hours of work for those same, same clients. And that's how you would scale your actual one-to-one -one coaching. Then eventually what you all must do, if you want real, I'm gonna be real with you guys. If you all, and if you're watching this, I'm pretty sure you probably do want this. If you guys want a business that can deliver a predictable result, a, a predictable result at scale that's automated and you can make money whilst you sleep, onboard a client whilst you sleep, take the sales call while you sleep, and then get in and produce results for your clients, like actual real results for your clients while you sleep, then you're going to need to figure out a way how to productize your service. What I mean by productize your service is you need to find out a delivery mechanism that allows you to basically deliver the same end result without your input. If you can't do that, you're going to always be a slave to the dollar because once you start limiting, or, or, or should I say connecting time with money, because there's limited amount of time in a day, there's only 24 hours in a day, your money, to, your money is always going to be limited. Now, don't get me wrong, you can obviously increase your price of coaching over, over time as you get become more and more valuable and become more of an expert and whatnot, but you're always going to be trading time for money in that particular business model. So uh, so it's flawed is what I'd say. There's always gonna be a glass ceiling. I mean, the ceiling is extremely high. If you take a look at how much you know Tony Robbins makes, I think he's got like a net worth of like 700 million or something like that, which is absolutely insane. When you think about it, he's just, it's just a glorified online coach and one person business, to be honest with you. Obviously now he's got massive teams and employees and whatnot. But yeah, he started off exactly doing the exact same thing. He's how far this can, can be taken. But long story short guys, you need to figure out how to productize the knowledge you have and your services that you have so that you can, you know, you know, clients come to you. So you need to figure out a client inbound system, which we do help you with, by the way, if you're trying to build out a one person business, I call that the Kaizen funnel, your Kaizen social funnel. Then you need to figure out a way how to actually then get a, you know, an actual client to actually pay for your service without you actually having to do a call. We can actually put appointment setters and sales team in place for that. Then what you need to do is be able to deliver the actual service without you having to actually physically show up every single time to do this. Now guys, this is exactly how you productize it and start making money while you sleep. If you can figure this out, guys, I'm telling you right now, it's going to be the most fulfilling business because you're actually getting real results for real people. It's going to be the most impactful business because like I said, you're getting real results for real people. It's not just you running an agency, helping an e-commerce brand sell more frigging men's t-shirts, like men's necklaces. Like that's cool and all for making money, but you're not really making an impact on the world. Helping somebody go from like broke to making some decent money or even, even you know, even more impactful than that would be helping somebody, you know, who's really unhealthy in just their, their life habits to helping them becoming much more healthy, much more healthy weight, healthy in their, in their mind, healthy in their body, soul, spirit. That's actually gonna be so much more impactful to people than you just helping another e-commerce brand with Facebook ads sell some t-shirts online. And I'm trying to say like, cool, you've made like 10K per month because you've got like five, six, seven clients or whatever it is. And they're all like e-commerce brands and they're selling like really random products all over the place. That's cool for making money, but it's not really that great for fulfillment. It's not really that great for leaving an impact. It's not really that great for leaving a legacy. And it's not really great for, like I said, uh, fulfillment and actually making yourself feel good. I mean, you just made some money, cool, but you've not really changed the world in any way in pretty much, pretty much any way. The way you change the world is by actually helping people, giving back, and actually taking them from where they were to a positive transformation, guys. So you need to figure out how to, how to productize your knowledge and then automate the sales process on that. So for example, I'll give you an example of how I did this real quick. So Montel, back in the day, was broke. You know, this is me at 22 years old, maybe 20, 22, 23-ish 20, years old, you're 22 going on to 23. 
I was broke, I was in university, didn't really want to go to university. I wanted to start a clothing line, that didn't really work for me, it completely failed. But I at least started realizing that my life is is not going the way how I wanted it to to be. And I wanted to become a millionaire at, be, before the age of 30, which means I'm actually three years ahead of schedule, which is really cool. So long story short, it was me just sitting down and realizing and just you know talking to myself and being like, yo, my life's actually sucking right now. What am I doing with my life? I then came to that realization and instead of complaining about it and whining about it, I immersed myself into self-improvement books, reading a whole bunch of books. I remember my first ever book was Rich Dad, Poor Dad, and I think I read that at the age of 22 or 23. So it wasn't until the age of 22 or 23 that I first picked up a book. I know some of you guys are, are much younger than me and you've actually read way more books than me at, at your age. So. Props, props to you guys. I then started going into self-experimentation, as in like, I started looking into all these different business models, came across dropshipping, tried dropshipping, didn't really work for me. Tried SMA, that's when, you know, I just dedicated my life to just like learning SMA and just being like, you know what, I'm just gonna figure this SMA stuff out for myself. So I started self-experimenting and doing the thing myself. So I built myself an agency. I then started realizing that, oh shit, I actually have a skill of building agencies now. I've actually built my own agency and I started developing my own unique frameworks. So these unique frameworks for me were, nobody was really talking about this back in the day, was using Upwork, scaling up using Upwork really quickly to get few wins under your belt so that you can build up cash flow and then taking that cash flow and putting it into hiring virtual assistants and you build an agency much quicker that way because you need to do lots of outreach in order to get on calls basically. Even if you can find a way to multiply yourself by hiring you know, appointment setters and team members, then you can actually scale much further. The only problem is, is that when you go to hire a team member, they cost money, is what I'm trying to say. So I figured out how to make money off of Upwork first, took that money and, and leveraged it and used it to hire virtual assistants. I then started you know, testing those services myself and actually scaled my agency you know, to multiple six figures mark in terms of like monthly monthly revenue and actually um, with decent profit margins as well. The profit margins were anywhere between 75-ish percent on like really bad, uh, bad months were almost like 80 percent nothing i won't say nothing too 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 higher than that though like running the agency the more the more clients you get i've noticed that your profit margin starts to to, to, to dwindle to be honest with you i know people that are running agencies right now and their profit margin like 30 to 50 percent um which is which is crazy because with a one-person business your profit margins are literally like 79 percent uh, excuse me 97 percent not 79 97 percent uh, so that's when i started field testing my frameworks on myself like oh shit this hybrid system is really working people started clocking on so i was documenting my journey throughout all of this and that's when i switched to coaching full time after years of doing this and i started helping people you know like one-to-one -one style with the actual hybrid just implementing the hybrid system the, the, the same thing i was doing in my business and this is the thing about one person businesses because you've actually done the thing yourself the service delivery thing is actually quite easy it's very very easy it feels very light when you're teaching somebody because it's like things that you've already done you're just giving back and it's teaching people the things that you're doing on a day-to-day -day basis it's almost like explaining somebody to what your what your morning routine is it's just like you do this i this is what i do when i wake up this is what i do when i get out of bed this is what i do so it was the same thing but running for running an agency so i was just explain it to people this is what i do when i'm on upwork this is how i build my profile this is the scripts i use this is how i get on calls this is how i close clients this is how i deliver the, de deliver results for clients it was just the same thing i was doing in my day-to-day -day business that i was just giving to other people so it was very easy and very light and very just overall, just very easy to do. It wasn't like Facebook ads where you have to learn like, um, you know, obviously I'm not, I wouldn't class myself as an expert at Facebook ads, but it was like, you know, if I'm trying to do Facebook ads for an e-commerce brand, I'm going to need to hire like a specialist. And then if a client asks me a very difficult question, I might have to ask like an actual specialist or my expert, like what's going on in this particular situation? What would you recommend in this situation? Whereas when it was me, being an expert, it was just like, oh yeah, just very simple fix. When somebody asks me something, I just explain them one steps one, two, three, four. It's very easy because I'm just doing that throughout my life. Then group coaching. Group coaching is when you actually start scaling out your um, uh, your business more. You could probably get your actual, you know, done with you business past like 50K per month easily with just one-to-one -one clients. And eventually what you can do is just move into to group coaching. I personally don't do group coaching because I actually really do recommend doing the one-to-one -one stuff, but eventually you can move into group coaching. But then eventually what happened for, with me is, is that I started getting a lot of one-to-one -one students and instead of doing the group coaching thing, I just said, okay, cool. I'm just gonna take the same training I'm giving people one-to-one, -one, the same result I'm doing, the same coaching I'm giving them, the same everything, but this time I'm just gonna build it in a way that I can just record it on a video and give people those videos. The exact same training, the exact same things I was saying to people one-to-one, -one, the exact same help, the exact same scripts, the exact same way I was I was, I was, was doing the one-to-one -one training, getting people results and helping people scale to like 10K, 20K, 30K, 40K per month and stuff like that. I just said, okay, cool. I'm gonna give, instead of teaching people one-to-one -one individually and just saying the same things to them over and over and over again, because it was just the same four steps, to be honest with you. The same four steps I was coaching people on, 
instead of doing those same four steps and repeating myself over and over and over again to pe- to in- to ten different people individually or however many students I was I was coaching at the time, I said, you know what? I'm just gonna take the same steps and just build a program out of just a video version of it. It's the exact same fo- exact same steps. I'm just gonna give people that instead. And that, by the way, is how my program agency transmutation was born. Quite literally, out of demand. Literally born out of demand, guys. So these are the steps you're going to need to take, guys, if you really want to scale yourself and you know your personal brand and your one person business to that seven figure per year mark, guys. And again, this can take anywhere between, I would say probably even two to five years. If you're really pushing it, I would say like two to five years. I mean, you probably can do it in one year, but I wouldn't rush it, guys. This is something that you actually want to take time with something that you actually want to become like genuinely good at, then again, you don't need to become a world, world world-class expert. You just need to figure out something that you're two or three steps. I would even say one to two steps ahead of somebody and you've got your own unique take on that thing. Could be anything to do with health and fitness, business and finance, or love and relationships. Those are normally the, the, the areas that work the best when it comes to building a one-person brand. Anyway, guys, a one-person business and a one-person brand, actually. Uh, but yeah, guys, if you do need help building out a one-person business or build, you're turning your name in, and, and should I say turning your name into a six-figure brand, drop me a DM on Instagram. Just drop me the DM, one-person business, and then I'll know you come from this video. What we'll do is have a conversation on there, see if it's actually completely a good fit for you. Then if it is, we'll jump on a call just to iron out the less of the details. And then what we'll do is get you enrolled into the program and actually see if you're genuinely a good fit for this and actually start getting your results as well. That's what it's all about. Anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to drop a like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.